The fact that <laughs> is your reason for saying that is the fact that money didn't go to Ukraine for the people that say make North Carolina Ukraine to get money. Is that what your argument was that about? It's not my argument that it's I'm saying only 5% of our total. But what is your point? So, so, so we just went through all the history of stuff with FEMA. You decided to go there. What you, I'm trying okay. to get the climax. Let me, let I got me, the let me simplify it for our audience. Climax. We're under the impression from Vinny. I said to Vinny that all our money is going to Lebanon, to Ukraine, to everything. Well, it's only 5%. So the money that is staying in the country needs to be allocated better. Oh, or maybe a budget needs to put less than 5% is, to foreign aid. This is not the conversation at all. Let me, let what do you, I, I don't understand what you're talking about. Well, on the PBD podcast, Patrick Bet David completely shuts down his co-host Adam during a heated debate about foreign aid and other topics. Patrick Bet David was trying to make his point, but Adam jumped in, saying Patrick Bet David was wrong about several things. In response... Patrick Bet David didn't hold back, delivering one of the most intense rebuttals we've seen from him on the PBD podcast, especially toward Adam. Let's dive into this clip from the Valuetainment YouTube channel, where Patrick Bet David calls out his co-host Adam in this memorable moment on the PBD podcast. Pun, Pun intended, intended, absolutely intended, while he's talking to Congress that he needs more money and having make, and making this very political. I, I don't think I'm on the page of like vote suppression. These are mostly red votes. These are there because that gets that gets pretty hairy and that could cause an incredible response of turnout in the other direction. But this comes down to one thing, and it's something that is probably the most important thing in part of this election, and that's just money and the math of where the money goes and budgeting. You know, we see every year they kick the can down the road. Oh, we'll deal with this. Put more on the credit card. Put more on the credit card. What's the current U.S. federal debt? $34 trillion. By the time it's 2028, over the next president, expected to be almost $50 trillion. Like, how big of a hole are we trying to dig here? Now, what's interesting about how the, the sort of the budgeting works and the appropriations bill you put in there is that there's discretionary spending and the non discretionary spending. So what's the non-discretionary spending? I learned this when I started doing money content in 20, 2015. Uh, non-discretionary spending are things that basically Congress has no control of. They don't do it each year. It's not a part of the budget. Budget. It's mandated by law. That if you're liking this content, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. It makes a huge difference and helps me create more videos like this. Now let's jump back into the video. Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, but not, but discretionary spending, education, transportation, environment, law enforcement, everything like that. Uh, non, sorry, non-discretionary spending. You know what the budget is for that? Almost four trillion dollars a year, three point nine trillion dollars. Discretionary spending, where Congress basically gets a vote every single year and they must approve it, one point seven trillion dollars. Now to Vinny's point about. How much should we give to foreign aid? How much should we give to domestic? Here's something to consider. Do you know what percentage of discretionary spending goes to domestic versus foreign? This is actually important. What percentage of the 1.7 trillion stays in the country versus leaves the country? How much leaves? 5%. So 95% stays in the country. When I talk about the, the discretionary spending, transportation, healthcare, I'm sorry, not healthcare, environment, law enforcement, everything that's going like that. 1.6 trillion of the 1.7 trillion stays in the country. Now, if you ask the everyday American, they will agree with you. They'll be like, no, we need to keep all the money, the majority of the money in the country, help our people. Who wants to hear that FEMA's broke? Ridiculous, especially during hurricane season. Like, what are you thinking? But also understanding that only 5%. Where are you going, bro? I'm just saying that it's not as ridiculous as it seems. Like, if you do the math on it, only 5% of the $1.7 trillion but, of the discretionary I don't spending. What you said. Wait, wait. I don't understand what you just said. So what does that have to do with them not having money that's been unaccounted for and unliquidated to spend on something like that? that? Obviously, they're not doing their budgeting correctly. But it, this has nothing to do with the foreign spending because... I, well, it, well, my, what, well, my thing is, hear this. me out, okay. hear me out. This has to do with what they're choosing to spend money on non-discretionary spending. Now, if you ask me, I assume if we look under the hood here, I assume they spent a lot of money on some DEI bogus nonsense. I rather still don't than, know where you're going. 
Okay. I, here's what I'm trying. What are, are you, you struggling with? No, what I'm struggling with is try, I'm trying to help you with your struggles. Are you Are you saying? <laughs> I'm not the, struggling. The, the, that was a solid point. I understand what Adam is trying to say, but it still doesn't sit right. He mentioned that 1.6 out of 1 billion dollars or trillion. It's hard to keep track with numbers that big stays within the U.S. But to me, it doesn't matter. Whether it's a small amount or a large one, any money leaving the country for foreign conflicts we're not directly involved in feels like too much. Sure, we have allies and global responsibilities, but we should prioritize our own issues first. I'm sure Patrick Bet David agrees that with the high tax burden people face, it's frustrating to see money going elsewhere when there are serious problems here at home. It's important to focus on how our tax dollars are spent, and many feel that resources should be directed toward improving conditions here rather than being sent overseas let me know what you think in the comments the fact that <laughs> is your reason for saying that is the fact that m money didn't go to ukraine for the people that say make north carolina ukraine to get money is that what your argument was that about it's not my argument that it's i'm saying only five percent of our total what is your point so 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 we just went through all the history of stuff with fema you decided to go there what you, i'm trying okay. to get the climax let me let i got me, the let me play. simplify I it for our audience climax. we're under the impression from Vinny. i said to Vinny that all our money is going to Lebanon, to Ukraine, to everything. Well, it's only 5%. So the money that is staying in the country needs to be allocated better. Oh, or maybe a budget needs to put less than 5% to foreign aid. This is, this is the conversation at all. Let me, let me, what do you, I, I don't understand what you're talking about, well, Pat. Well, well, we're talking about foreign spending what did, versus domestic spending. What part discretionary of, what versus non-discretionary. What part of everything I shared with had to do with foreign? Like it's like Vinny's we're talking about. Vinny's entire rant no, no, my, was about foreign aid. No, my, no, no. How my, much money is first, going? No, my, he my, said Lebanon, one hundred fifty million. Lebanon just got okay, on the but fourth. But also Ukraine. Yeah, no, but no, no, no. The, the biggest thing with the Lebanon case that he made one hundred fifty million dollars is nothing. Yeah. But the whole point. No, no. You, you, <laughs> this is the point about him saying one hundred fifty million dollars. You ready? Yes. Okay. So let's just say, God forbid, someone you love just died. Mm -hmm. Okay, and. You need my help. And we're at a family gathering. An hour after somebody you love just died, I announced, hey, guys, I'm giving uh, uh, Joey's best friend's cousin, sister's best friend's brother's high school teacher $750,000 to help him out. That's the problem with what he's saying. The timing of after someone died, I'm giving a stranger $750,000. It's not the dollar amount. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. As I mentioned earlier, I get the point Adam was trying to make, but I think Patrick Bet David's perspective is much more relevant to the bigger picture. Adam tends to come across as trying to sound overly smart, but sometimes his arguments feel a bit out of touch. I like how Patrick Bet David, being friends with Adam, can still step in and say, dude, what are you even talking about? It's clear that Patrick felt Adam was missing the mark and didn't hesitate to shut him down. While I don't want to be too harsh, I'm personally not a huge fan of Adam on the PBD podcast. I'm sure he's a great person, but I'm just not convinced he fits the show. What do you guys think about what Adam was trying to say? As I mentioned earlier, even if a small amount of money is being sent overseas when we're facing issues like FEMA's struggles, the border crisis, economic challenges, and rising crime, it just doesn't sit well with me. Adam's math on the show doesn't change the fact that sending money abroad when we're facing these issues feels like a disservice to American taxpayers. And yeah, I'm definitely feeling it too with taxes this year. It's frustrating. Honestly, the less we give to the government, especially under this administration, the better. Let me know in the comments what you think about this episode of the Valuetainment and PBD podcast where Patrick Bet David calls out his co-host Adam for what he sees as nonsense live on the show.